Welcome to ICS or the International Church of Shanghai. I'm so glad you can be with us today. In just a moment, we have a time to enter into a time of praise and worship with our worship team, and right after that, the preaching of the word. But first, here are some announcements in the life of our church. I'd like to make an announcement. Uh, as you have heard, our church will be having the soft launch this coming Sunday. Thereafter, your official launch on the 13th of November. I'd like to encourage all of you to sign up uh, for the various services so that uh, we can resume uh, on-site services as soon as possible. We will continue this recording for a couple of weeks until everyone has been notified regarding our on-site services. And pray with us that we will be able to uh, have more rooms for meetings for the kids and the youth services in time to come. So I look forward to seeing you on site and say hello to you and to greet you and we long to fellowship with you after the services too. So please join us for the on-site service as soon as possible. Please note that ICS is a multi-denominational Christian church. In compliance with local government regulations, ICS online services and events are open to foreign passport holders only. Cell groups. One thing we truly value at ICS is community. Whether you're joining us for the first time or you have been joining ICS for quite some time already, cell groups are where you can develop real and lasting friendships to support one another that go beyond greetings or quick chat at church on Sunday morning. Are you interested to do Bible study? At ICS, we offer a discipleship program by partnering with CDSI for their Bible study lessons and materials. Some of the cell groups have started the study already. So come on, join our cell groups. To find a cell group that's perfect for you, please scan the QR code or send us an email to fill in your requests. We'll reach out to get you connected right away. With the new ICS phone app, you can access online services, sermons, daily devotionals, and everything on the ICS website with ease in one place. Download yours now. Available on the Apple Store and Google Play Store. Now for more details, please scan the QR code. Have you had your daily bread today? Our body needs food every day, and so does our spirit. ICS devotionals can help you start off your day with a short message, along with some scriptures to meditate upon. ICS Kids Church now also has daily devotionals for your kids, and ICS Trailblazers also provides devotionals for the youth. All these three devotionals can be accessed on our ICS website, or on our ICS app, or just simply scan the QR code. So check out our very own ICS devotionals if you haven't already. Start reading and sharing our daily devotionals to those who may be missing out. Hello there. TC prepares many exciting events all year round to keep the community connected. Here are just a few. Find out more by scanning the respective events QR code. Do continue to follow TEC through our official WeChat account or TEC Mini program to get involved. Stay connected, be a blessing. We want to thank all our members for your tithes and offerings. It makes a real difference not only to the operations of our church, but allowing us to be blessed to bless the community around us. If you're new with us, don't feel any obligations whatsoever. 
We're just so glad you can be with us here today. If you have come prepared to give, please note ICS as a new bank ties and offerings QR code using Alipay or WeChat Pay. Please leave the payment remarks in the remittance blank or without inputting anything. If you prefer to give via local bank transfer, please scan the QR code for the bank account information. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you so much for your support to ICS. Okay, let us come together for our time of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father God, Lord, we pray and we thank you, Lord God, that you're bringing us together, Father God, to praise and worship you and to hear your word today. We pray and thank you, Lord God, for our praise and worship team and the unique gifts and talents that you've blessed them to be able to unify us as one body and one voice to praise and worship you. And Lord, we also want to uplift our Pastor Daniel and Pastor Kelly into your arms right now and ask, Lord God, that you bless them with wisdom, clarity and conviction as they preach your word, Father God. Let it go forth and not return void. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. We will be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy the house of the Lord, our God is shining in this place. We won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. Verse 2 now, we sing to the God who heals, we sing to the God who saves, we sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross And he rose up from that grave My God still rolling stones away There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today And we won't be quiet Let's sing joyfully There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place We won't be quiet Shout out your praise. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Let's declare that we were the beggars. Now we're royalty, we were the princes, now amen. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place We won't be quiet We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today We won't be quiet We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place We won't be quiet Shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We shout out your
reaches of heaven, starry heights, lights of the evening, dancing in silent skies, brilliance of morning, breaking day. Oh, let them praise Him, praise His name. Oh, praise His name. Oh, praise His name. Let all His wondrous works declare His praise. Mightiest mountains, peaceful plains, snowfall and fire, thundering ocean waves, kings and their kingdoms, age to age. King and throne, King and throne in majesty, all things made by His decree, hear creation's melody, praise Him.
庇护条件，为我付出，牺牲爱子，教我的书，你爱充满我。的爱，你无条件的爱，让我心的满足。你无条件的爱，你无条件的爱，让我心的满足。Lordia, to take us into the next song. Me. 
Begin to speak quietly to the Lord. It's been a challenging season for many of us. And only you know the struggles that you're going through in your heart. But God knows it even more. He's the peace that guards your heart. He's your help in your time of need. He's your hope that leads you on. So just come before Him. And just commune with Him.
begin to find your hope and your joy and your victory in Him. Know that He is for you and He is with you. You just begin to lift up worship to Him in your heart. Know that you stand on the point of victory. That when God is with you, nothing can be against you. Father, we praise you and thank you that we are able to um, gather on site to worship you starting from this Sunday. We thank you for your love, your goodness and your grace that you have extended towards us. We'd like to pray for those who are affected by the various lockdowns in different estates, that Father, your presence will be with them. I pray that Father, they will be released from this lockdown and return to normalcy, Father, as soon as possible. We'd like to pray for ourselves that, Lord, we will gather on site to worship you in spirit and in truth. I pray that, Father, you help us to work closely with authorities to ensure the safety of our members. We thank you that, Father, we can continue to worship you with our tithes and our offering. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'd like to make an announcement. Uh, as you have heard, our church will be having the soft launch this coming Sunday. Thereafter, your official launch on the 13th of November. I'd like to encourage all of you to sign up uh, for the various services so that uh, we can resume uh, on-site services as soon as possible. We will continue this recording for a couple of weeks until everyone has been notified regarding our on-site services. And pray with us that we will be able to uh, have more rooms for meetings for the kids and the youth services in time to come. So I look forward to seeing you on site and say hello to you and to greet you and we long to fellowship with you after the services too. So please join us for the on-site service as soon as possible. All of us enjoy a great conversation recalling the faithfulness of God, especially among good friends who have gone through all the good and bad times with us. 
It is especially joyful when we make certain recollection of how we have come out victoriously despite of the difficult times in our lives. I'm sure most of you would have friends like this who has wept and rejoiced with you in life. These are good friends that you have made at different times and seasons of your life. However, there's someone who will always be a friend who stick closer to you than a brother in good and bad times. He is God. It might seem a bit far-fetched for some who have never really gotten to know God in a personal level, but it is very achievable relationship if we are willing to allow Him to walk with us. In fact, the Bible says in Daniel 11.32b that, But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. There's no better person to emulate the life of adventures and exploit than King David because he knew God. He's also known as a man after God's heart. Isn't this what we should long to be? Most definitely. Turn with me to Psalms 34 verse 1 to 22, reading to you from the New King James Version, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to Him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear Him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in Him. Oh, fear the Lord, you His saints. There's no one to those who fear Him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the man who desires life? and love many days, that he may see good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and His ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears, and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He guards all his bones and no one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the souls of his servants and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. The background of this passage was David running away from Saul after the latter attempted to kill him on several occasions. David fled to the king of Gath and his people, hoping that they would not recognize him. But he had to fake being insane to escape, escape from them. At that time, there was nobody that David could turn to for help except to depend on the faithfulness of God. This psalm recorded his real-life experience with God. It is amazing how much revelation David had about covenant, righteousness, and the character of God. We have heard a lot of good report and victory over life's encounter in David's life. There were many low points in his life too. A man who knows God can deal with all the high and low points in life well with the help of the Lord. That's when we truly taste and see that the Lord is good. What I really like about this psalms is the faith-building words that came out of David's mouth. His word of faith was like the occasion when he was the only person who spoke out in faith regarding what their God can do despite of the fear that permeated through the camp because of Goliath's threat. He brought faith and hope to the Israelites' camp. Through this psalm, he is building our faith too. You and I can be like David as a man of faith to our family, the cell group, the company, and the church. Faith arises when we know God, has experienced His faithfulness, and know we are in Christ. You would have read about all the trial, tribulations, and adversities encountered by those who love God 
in the Old Testament. Many of us, especially the corporate and business people, would take time to read up on successful CEOs, entrepreneurs, private equity investors and multi-billionaires. Some will pay millions just to have lunch with them to glean from their wisdom and experience. Let us learn from the life of David regarding his walk with God and the exploit that he had in life with the Lord. We can draw courage and faith from this passage because they teach us about the character of God. The God who journeyed with David is the same God who will journey with us. Be bold, your righteousness comes from God. Nobody can or will carry out great exploit and adventures with God if they think that God is unhappy or are against them. Only those who know that God is with them will do great exploit for Him. Romans 8.31 says, that What then shall we say to this thing? If God is for us, who can be against us? This passage talks about all the tribulation, persecution and challenges that we can face in life. But God's everlasting love is with us. God is on your side and my side. Whenever we are faced with a crisis, one of the attacks of the devil on our lives will be our right standing with God. He is known as the accuser of the brethren who accuses us day and night. He torments us with our past. All of us have a past. Therefore, the devil will use condemnation to make us feel unworthy to cry to God in prayer. In fact, he will make us believe that we are unworthy of God's love, mercy and grace because of the weaknesses in our lives. He knows exactly how to make us feel little, full of shame and condemnation. Praise the Lord, God has asked us to put on the breastplate of righteousness to resist the devil when he comes against us or even accuse us of being unworthy. Let's go back to verse 15 to 17 of the main passage. It says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. If we are not taught correctly, then many will be discouraged or in doubt regarding God's willingness to listen to their cry or even to look at them. We are doubtful of our right standing with God. We are not sure whether we are righteous because of the imperfections in our lives. Many people base their worthiness before God on their own works and personal conduct. While both works and personal conducts are important, but we will never obtain a right standing with God if we depend on our own abilities. Are you righteous? There's a difference between living a righteous life and being seen as righteous in the eyes of God. Righteousness is the ability to stand before God just like you have never seen. It is a positional truth. Nobody can claim self-attained righteousness because we are all aware that we are imperfect creatures waiting for the perfection in heaven. However, Jesus has obtained our righteousness on our behalf when He took all our sin upon Himself on the cross and gave us His righteousness. Let us build on the biblical truth. Let me substantiate it with two passages of Scripture. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For He made Him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Romans 5, 16 to 18 says, And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offence resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offences resulted in justification. Oh, for if by the one man's offence death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one man's offence, judgment came to all men, resulting in condemnation, even so through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. Sin came into this world through one man's offence. Adam brought the sin nature into our lives Thus, it resulted in condemnation because all of us have sinned against God. Praise be to God 
that He made Jesus to be sin for us so that we can have His righteousness. And praise be to God that righteousness or the gift of righteousness comes from God. Justification was obtained through one man's righteous act. The righteous act was done by Jesus Christ. It has caused us to have the ability to stand before God just like we have never seen. This was achieved through Jesus Christ. This righteous position before God is a gift from God through Jesus Christ. We are justified. Justification means made righteous. Therefore, we can stand in the presence of God as though we have never sinned. This is the reason the Apostle Paul taught us in the epistles to the church in Ephesus that we are blessed with all the spiritual blessing in Christ. We are hidden in Christ, therefore we are accepted in a beloved and seen as righteous in Him. The theological conviction of both passages in the book of Romans and the epistles in Ephesians is the same. It is purely the decision of the giver when you receive a gift. You don't have to work for a gift because it is given out of grace. We receive wages when we work for it. We do not receive gift when we have worked for it. Therefore, the gift of righteousness is purely given to us based on the abundance of God's grace so that nobody can boast of His work, His act of goodness or servanthood. And then, the Apostle Paul built this truth in more detail for us. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24 tells us our positional truth. It says that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. You know, in the entire Bible, it talks about the old man and the new man, especially in the New Testament. The old man is in, in Adam. The new man is in Christ. So when we are born again, we are, new we are new creation. It is the new man. The new man is created in God in true righteousness and holiness. Isn't it fantastic? This new creation realities and positional truth is given to us the moment we believe in Jesus. We are counted as righteous the moment we believe in God's salvation plan, just as Abraham and David believed and they were accounted as righteous. We are also accounted as righteous and we have a new creation, a new found position in Christ that the spirit man is created in holiness and righteousness. Praise God. So this newfound position of righteousness in God's sight grant us bonus to approach God 24-7. You will behave righteously when you know that you are created in true righteousness and holiness in the new creation. Therefore, you are seen as righteous before God and will act righteously on all occasions to prevent you from doing or wandering in the wrong direction. We cannot do great exploit and adventures with God and for God, if we are constantly feeling condemned for what has happened in the past, we have no past because once we are new creation, the old has passed and the new has come. Our past is under the blood of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So once we are aware of how God looked at us in Christ, then we will be bold to execute everything that God has instructed us to do. This is especially true when we know that we are walking in His perfect will. Our faith will rise with this conviction that God sees us righteous in Christ. It is as though we have never sinned. This is not based on our own strength, but the gift of God through Jesus Christ. The breastplate of righteousness was given to us after the work of redemption by Jesus Christ. It gives us bonus or to be fearless in the eyes of the devil's onslaught against us. Why do you have the breastplate of righteousness? It is because the devil will constantly attack your righteous position before God. Therefore, the Apostle Paul asked, our, asked us to put on the whole armour of God, especially the breastplate of righteousness, so that we can be bold in approaching God. David had no fear or inhibition in seeking the face of God since he had a conviction that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. He was convinced that he was righteous. He acted righteously when he refused to lay hand on King Saul, though there were several opportunities. This passage of Psalm encourages us to seek the face of God. Let's go back to the main passage of verse 5 and verse 6 says, I sought the Lord and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to Him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. 
David was alone when he was fleeing from Saul. The spirit of fear could overwhelm this young man because King Saul was tracking him down with his army. I believe it wasn't easy to fall asleep at night when he must watch out for people who were after him. Can you imagine? David was hunted down like an enemy was hunted by a hunter. However, he did, he did testify in this Psalms that angels were encamped around him. They were there to protect. They were there to protect and deliver him. Isn't God good to send angels to protect David? God has angels protecting your residents too. Though David was in deep trouble, he was assured of God's help and protection. David could have been easily overwhelmed by anxiety. Praise the Lord that he learned to seek the face of God and he cried out to God in prayer. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We are greatly blessed. In the Old Testament, only the high priest could enter the Holy of Holies, which represented the presence of God. The veil in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom that separated the Holy of Holies. When Jesus dealt with the sin issue that separated us from God, He has offered His blood in the heavenly tabernacle. Therefore, all of us who are hidden in Christ and blessed with the gift of righteousness can approach the throne of grace with boldness to seek the face of God to ask Him for help and deliverance now. We are more blessed than David. Therefore, we should do greater exploit for God. He, we will do more when we know God, especially when, especially what He has done for us through Jesus. We are highly favoured and greatly blessed by God. His eyes are on us. His ears are listening to our cry. All these are possible because we have been made righteous in Christ. God listened to the cry of His covenant people. We have read about how He responded to the cry of the Israelites when they were suffering under the bondage of slavery in Egypt. Likewise, David testified that God heard his cry and saved him from all his troubles. We must not allow the spirit of fear to immobilize us with all the concerns that we have. We are to cast all our cares and anxiety to the Lord because He cares for us. We are able to meditate on the perfect love of God that He has towards us. He has our best interests and desire the highest good for our lives. We must guard our mind and not allow anxiety to overwhelm us. We need to intentionally meditate on the Word of God, especially on God's promises of deliverance and protection to keep the peace of God in our heart and mind. We need to have a lifestyle of worship. The anointing or the presence of God breaks every yoke and removes every burden that, we, that are on us. There's tremendous power in praise and worship to lift the oppression of our lives. Therefore, let us be encouraged to enter the presence of God regardless it is in our closet, cell group or church services with praise and thanksgiving. David understood this important aspect of praise and worship. He, has, he had experienced God in this wonderful habit. In fact, he witnessed how the playing of his harp helped King Saul when he was oppressed. Verse 1 to verse 2a of the main passage says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. David was living out the calling of God for his life. He was anointed to be the next king by Samuel the prophet. Therefore, it doesn't mean that life will be rosy and plain sailing when we are living under God's perfect will. Just as Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. David spoke about the need to praise and bless God despite of the challenges that he was experiencing. He had a heart of thanksgiving. Many of the Psalms were written by David as an expression of worship to the Lord. Life has not been easy for many of us. As we speak, there are brothers and sisters who are still experiencing lockdown in their estates. The economy ha has slowed down. Some might be facing uncertainties of what is to come for them in the future. Others might be caught between the rock and a hard place like David. 
most people would not be in a mood to praise and worship God when they are caught between a rock and a hard place. Honestly, we'll be oppressed the, mo the more we suppress our feelings or dwell in our unhappiness. Therefore, we need to choose to praise God despite of the unfavorable circumstances. Praise and thanksgiving help us to sing of the goodness of God. It reminds us of who He is. He is the great I Am. He is the many-breasted one, the El Shaddai. He is the Almighty God. He is more than enough for us, just as He was more than enough for King David. I would like to strongly encourage you to come back to on-site church services so that we can lift up our voices together to praise God regardless of the circumstances and the situation that we are facing. Because when the presence of God comes, the anointing will break every yoke and remove every burden over your life. It will be good to take some time to worship God daily with songs of praise and worship. It will be wonderful if you can play any instrument like the guitar, the piano, the keyboard to help you express the heart of worship. If not, you can also use Spotify, QQ Music, or Music CDs to bring you into the presence of God. Verse, Psalms 100 verse 4 says, Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. Sometimes we really do not feel like praising because we are disappointed and feel let down. We are weary and struggling. We are focusing on the problem and it seems to overwhelm us. All the more, we need to praise so that we will refocus on God rather than on the problem. It is, a real, it is really a choice that we make to praise God. We enter the presence of God with intentional, vibrant praise. It helps us to focus our mind on God rather than be distracted by the circumstances and the challenges in life. It reminds us that God is faithful, powerful and righteous. We celebrate His victory and sing of His goodness. It is a powerful reminder for us. It is also a choice for us to choose to praise God than allow the devil to steal our joy and peace in our hearts. We will intentionally praise Him until our soul is ready to worship Him. The spirit of worship will come into our hearts when our soul is refocused on God. Let's use our voice as a trumpet sounding forth the blessing of the Lord. Praise is declaring the goodness of God. Praise is declaring the victory of the Lord. Praise is declaring the faithfulness of the Lord. Praise is declaring the greatness of the Lord. Now let me give an example from the Bible. King Jehoshaphat is another Bible character who chose to praise God when faced with immense stress and pressure. Let me give you the passage. It's 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21 to 22 says, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord, who should praise the beauty of His holiness, as they went out before the army and were saying, Praise the Lord, for His mercies endures forever. Now when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. King Jehoshaphat was a godly king who sought the Lord and reminded God of his covenant with his people. He chose to seek God rather than crumble at the news of the overwhelming invasion by his enemies. Thank God for good leadership. You can be that good leadership of your home and your office, including your cell group. They received a word when they sought the face of God. Thus says the Lord to, to them, do not be afraid nor dismay because this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's. You and I can receive a word of assurance from God during worship just like King Jehoshaphat received a word from God. It is a personal word from God. The promise of, promises of God help us to anchor our faith in Him. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. They believe in the deliverance of the Lord since He has spoken to them. It doesn't make logical sense to send the worshippers ahead of the army. The worshippers were not a human shield against the enemy, but a form of declaration to express their faith in God and not in their human abilities. Likewise for you and I. Praise help us to shift our focus away from the problem and turn it towards God. 
Praise and worship is also a declaration of faith and a form of prayer. Faith will begin to rise within us to take hold of God's promises despite of the circumstances. Faith pleases God. We need to be in, a, in God's presence. Verse 18 to 19 give us a promise. It says, The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. I believe David felt broken in his heart and remorseful for the strain in relationship he has caused between Jonathan with King Saul. He was tormented in his mind, in great distress, separated from his family, being persecuted for no reason, and grieved. It was during such moment of distress that he felt the closeness of God. God will never abandon his covenant partners. In fact, it is during the most difficult time of one's life when the covenant relationship is appreciated and David felt the closeness of God. You and I can also experience the closeness and the faithfulness of God through the presence of the Holy Spirit. These are the verses that assure us of God's presence in our lives. James 4, 8a says, Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. John 14, 16 says, And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. You know, when we draw near to God in praise and worship, the manifested presence of God will also be with us. Why I say the manifested presence is so because the presence of God is already in our heart. He lives in us. That's why He's our helper. But there's this manifested presence that, that we experience in our time of worship, personal worship. We experience His presence with us. At the same time, the Holy Spirit is our helper, is working with, within us to help us. The Holy Spirit is our comforter, counsellor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby. He may dwell in each of us forever if we accept Him, acknowledge and pursue Him, and allow Him to minister, comfort, counsel, intercede, advocate, strengthen, and stand by us. The Holy Spirit can keep us accountable by convicting us of our sin, righteousness, and judgment. He can lead us in our daily struggles through uncertain times. One of the works of the Holy Spirit in our lives is to intercede through us when we are distressed. Romans 8, 26 to 27 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts know what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit is very sensitive to our emotions because he cares for us deeply. It is during our moment of weakness and in deep distress that he prays through us with groanings. It is a groaning that comes from, the, from deep within our hearts. It comes from the spirit man. He makes intercession for us through our speaking in tongues. The wonderful thing is this intercession is the spirit will be in accordance with the will of God for our lives. It is after we have partnered or you to the Holy Spirit interceding through us that we say all things work for the good of those who love God. When we know that it is the Holy Spirit praying through us that we feel His closeness, we sense His love, His grace, His mercy and His faithfulness in journeying with us. There will be a release in our heart and peace will fill our entire being after we have partnered Him in prayer. It is like a release vow when we, we allow Him to pray through us. The Holy Spirit helps us to express everything that's within us, what we are not able to utter in known languages due to the distress, overwhelming emotional turmoil, or are being poured, uh, everything are being poured out to God with the help of the Holy Spirit. He comforts us in this process when we yield to Him. He will also bring into our remembrance regarding the promises of God. The promises of God that's brought into our remembrance will bring faith into our hearts. It is during this moment of fellowship with the Holy Spirit where we will also grant us, 
He will also grant us godly ideas, divine strategy and even creativity to help us. He is our teacher. He can give practical ideas because he doesn't teach. He doesn't just teach the Bible to us. There are no industries in this world that He cannot help you because He is the creator of everything. The Holy Spirit was the one at the day of creation that brought everything that was spoken by God into being. He is always standing by us. He is always ready to help and play the role that has been assigned to Him. We can feel to His voice and His leading throughout the day. This is how close the presence of God is in our lives now. In conclusion, be bold to enter the presence of God. Let us worship at His footstool. Seek His face. There will never be any form of afflictions and tribulation that God is not able to overcome it with you and I. Just as David experienced God, you and I will also experience God. That's why David say, Taste and see that the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Let's bow our head and pray. With every head bowed and every eyes closed, I'd like to ask a very critical question today. If you're listening to this sermon, you're not a Christian, you have never accepted Jesus Christ into your heart to be your Lord and Saviour, and you'd like to receive Him today, you would like to become a child of the living God, pray this prayer with me. Say this prayer after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus to die for me on the cross. Forgive me of my sin. I am a sinner. Come into my heart today. Be my Lord and Saviour. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, please write to me. My email address is written at the bottom of this page. I'd like to connect with you and send you some materials and also welcome you to join us on our on-site services. Let me pray for the rest of my brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, we praise you and thank you that you listen to the cry of your servants. You listen to the cry of your children and you deliver us out of all our afflictions and tribulation. You have no favoritism. Just as you were with David, you will also be with us. I pray that, Lord, even as your children draw near to you, you will draw near to them. As they minister to you, you will also minister to them. May your grace be infused into your heart to sustain them. May they also talk about your goodness and your faithfulness. Now may the love of the Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed the service today and thank you so much for joining us. And I know that you've been encouraged by the preaching of the Word, that you know that God loves you and He has good thoughts toward you. You can continue to follow us on our website uh, and our social media accounts in YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram, or simply drop us an email to keep in touch. And here at ICS, we're a church we're a family that's blessed to bless the community and the nations. So we hope that you were blessed today and you're really trying to think about how you can be a blessing uh, to your neighbours and those around you. Well, we hope you have a great Sunday ahead and we look forward to seeing you real soon. God bless.